everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy back with a new quick win on the topic of creating a cool layout. So you perhaps have seen the Pinterest layout in the past. It is a layout composed of different images at different positions and it looks like a cool patchwork, whatever. So we're gonna recreate that layout and also apply some additional CSS and effects into our app. So let's do this. What we need is basically a blank new Ionic application to get started and then also the HTTP client module. Um, this is not really for the um, layout itself but for loading some cool images so it actually looks a bit more like the real uh, Instagram, no, Pinterest layout. So HTTP client module, there we go and now we can make HTTP requests and we're gonna work with these three files and that's everything we need. So first of all, um, first of all let's start the Ionic Surf in the background I would say and then we can take a look at something that is called Pixum. Um, let me bring this in. So here's the list of data. I don't know if we can just go to the yeah, here we go. Here we can get easy to use stylish placeholders. You can get specific images, a blur, whatever. But we want to get a list of images so we can also add a little um, virtual, no, not virtual, infinite scrolling to the images. So here's the app and now we are prepared. The cool thing about this list is that in the header, as uh, said right here, the link header includes uh, pagination information about the next page so whenever we make a request we can also extract data if there's another page so that's a bit more complicated but I'm sure you will be able to follow this so first of all let's start with an empty image list and also let's directly call this next page and this will be our starting URL and this is basically the first page or I think actually we could pass in page equals one. So then let's have a load images function that we will immediately call from our constructor once we start. So this function will now make an HTTP request to get our page right here. So again I can open this. This gives us a nice array of data. Um, okay so this.http Yes, of course, we need the HTTP client and of course the import is wrong. No, it's right. Oh, today must be my lucky day. This is a good sign. So let's use our next page URL and then um, let's subscribe to this first of all and let's see the result. So we want to make this step by step. I did this um, a bit too fast in the past fast in the past. It actually rhymes. So I want to show you the exact steps you can take and not just how I came up with it. So right now um, we see we get the result. Each of them contains the download URL and also the URL. So if we now go to this image we see a cool MacBook image and the download URL is also in there. And as I said before, uh, we also want to extract some data from the header and this works a bit different. So in order to do this, we need a little functionality that I got from the Tech Diaries blog right here. Um, you can check it out. Also cool stuff on the Tech Diaries uh, blog in general. Um, haven't checked out everything, but sometimes if I look things up, I actually uh, find it on this blog. Anyhow. This will now parse the header and in order to get the header information we have to change our HTTP GET request a tiny bit and also add observe uh, response. So this will give us more information about the actual response that we get back. So if we take a look at our log statement now we will see... We will see that we don't get any luck anymore. Um, did I mess up something in here? <laughs> um, yeah, oh, maybe it just took a bit longer. So now we got also the headers in here. So the headers 
not super easy to extract the information and still in the body is the same data. So first of all, we can set our image list now to the result.body. Um, um, normally when you make an HTTP request, Angular thinks uh, this will just return a plain object. And in order to fix this, you can let Angular know that the response you expect is an array in this case, and then everything works fine. Now also to um, get the information, we call this dot parse link header and we pass in our result and actually let me bring this in real quickly so we can do it like this uh, next page equals this parse link header but I will also lock the first part of this for you right here so you see that we extract a link field and then there's a property called next which contains the actual information that we need so let's try again and there we go this is the response and here's the next field with the link to page number two and if we make another request we would get page three and so on so this is now for the next page and then we can easily call load images again and again now let's go ahead and for the image list actually um, this is not enough because we need to check if the image list um, is empty so check the length equals zero and if that's the case we can simply set the result body to the list otherwise we have to append the information to our list so otherwise uh, if you call it later with the infinite loading you would simply always replace the list and of course you want to append the information and therefore take the information that's currently included in the image list and also everything that's in the body and you get your nice new array all right, from the data point of view, we're now fine and we can dive into the view. So let's add the primary color and let's call this Academy Pinterest. And then you could now get started by saying ion row, ion call, size equals whatever, let's say four, and then ng4 let image of image, um, image list. Was that the name? Yeah. Um, the problem now is very obvious pretty soon. So set it to, let's call this just image. And then um, I think we have to use the download URL. For the other URL, you might actually get a little error. So when you do it like this with a standard ionic grid, um, the result is what you see on screen now. This is, um, by no means a Pinterest layout. Although it looks good for a few of the images, there are images that are just longer and then the whole row has the same height. And of course we want to um, not have these white spaces in here, these white blocks. If there's a difference in the height, all the images should immediately follow up. And that's just not possible with the standard grid. And therefore we have to dump this and come up with another logic for this. And to do so, I actually went into the source code of the Pinterest website. And um, basically they use a column layout um, and then we can do the same pretty easily. So I will show you how. Ion padding just gives our collection a bit more padding and then we perhaps have a collection item we will define all the classes in a second let's make the text center and in here use our ng4 so now we got two diff elements and in here we will again put the image so there we go image download and then perhaps also image author so let's take a look how this looks now of course it won't look great i can already tell you Okay, now is everything in here. We can change this now by taking a look at the source code and checking out our collection and adding to the collection column count, for example, two. This would give us two columns of elements and we can change this to be like three and then we would have three columns of items. And you already see that all the space in here is filled up and it looks already pretty good. 
So let's do this from code and also we want to do this in a responsive way because if we set it to three and then we're on a small device, that doesn't really make sense. And for this case, you can use um, CSS media queries. So let's define for our collection the CSS rule and let me bring in my predefined code for this. So you can have an add media um, media query and you define from 0 to 779, you have two columns, everything from 780 to this is three, then you get four and perhaps um, with a min width of 1300, uh, you start with five columns. What this does is whenever a breakpoint uh, of your code is reached, so we start with two, we're getting bigger and bigger and at one point, did I save my code actually? At one point we become four, uh, three. It's great how I can count. Then we got to four. And at some point we have a layout of five. So super easy, just a few lines of our breakpoints and the column count definition. And we are already pretty close to what we want to achieve. Now the Pinterest layout looks a bit different, so of course, uh, we want to have like a little bar around this and also they had like pretty cool um, I don't know why it's a pin open um, a pretty cool effect that I want to copy so that's how it looks in here um, and then when you go over it you see there's a little um, border coming around this image so I wanted to have this hover effect as well. I know with Ionic, we're mostly on a mobile device, but if you create something for the web, I thought it would make sense to get this um, little effect as well. But first of all, uh, let's add for the collection item, just a bit of padding, a border radius, a little cool cursor, and also for the image, a little border radius. So now, once we go over this, you see my cool cursor and all of them look a bit nicer, um, more closely related to the Pinterest layout. Now we can take this a step further now. As I said, we want to implement a hover effect or is it Hoover? I'm not sure. Perhaps you can let me know. I'm not a native speaker. You know this. So there we go. Whenever we move with the mouse over it, we want to apply something. And now I actually copied a little animation from the um, Pinterest website. I have to admit, I just went into their source code. So here's the tab animation. It will basically make the image a bit smaller and then um, to the regular size and also apply a background. Also, uh, we have four words in here at the end of the animation, which means we will stick with this 100% keyframe styling so the background won't go back to the regular background. How this looks like now is like this. So really short and simple CSS animation and we can hover over everything. Actually, you can also test this pretty nicely if you just check out the uh, element and then at the top select the hover state or this selected, or you could also apply the other states. That's easier to debug in general. Now, what we might need as well is a button on here. So we could now come up with a cool animation to open this, or we want to have like a shortcut to bookmark this icon, which is actually what happens here as well. So then I went ahead and added a little button let me just add the markup to our class in here. So simple button, there we go. Now the problem with the button, of course, is if we just add it like this, it will look like this. Terrible, of course. What we want to do is we only want to show the button once we go over it and we don't only want to uh, hide it. So if you would go ahead and uh, display um, none, Oops, that was the wrong element, I guess. Uh, where, where did I go wrong? I think here. Um, actually, I had something like visibility, I think. Um, yeah, if you hide it, it is still there and taking the space. And of course, that also looks kind of strange. So we need a way to hide it. And therefore, we can, in the beginning, use for the ion button. 
simply display none and also maybe we want to have it at an absolute position and move it like 20 pixels from the top. Um, perhaps I will just remove this for a second so you see where the button is located now. There we go. Now the button is above the image and we just need to somehow hide and show it. Actually, it's already showing on here, which is interesting. Anyhow, let's hide it for now. And then when we go over the element, we're going to use ion button once again. And this time tell that this play is block. So let's save this and then it reloads. No button is shown. And once you go over an element, you see the bookmark icon. Of course, we haven't attached any uh, click event, but that would be pretty easy. So this works pretty great for all of our elements. And now finally, to add the infinite loading, I just wanted to add this so the image flow is not stopping there. You can simply add the standard infinite scroll in here with the ion infinite calling our load images functionality. So therefore, um, we need to go one step back and tell the load images that perhaps there's an event coming through. And if there's an event at this point, we can tell the event target to complete. So this will end the animation of the infinite loading. And now we can finally take a look at what we've done. We got all the nice animations. We can go to the bottom of the list. And then um, with a little delay, we see that more images are added. Actually, if we take a look at the lock, we see that we've queried page two. And if I now go to the bottom once again, it is making a query for page three. And that's how you create a Pinterest layout. Actually, I also wanted to try something because I know there's an ion image tag. Um, but I'm not 100% sure how it works. I think it had problems with the loading in the beginning, but that's, um, that's looking pretty nice. Um, well, actually kind of the same, I don't know, maybe you can, can give it a try and see if the ion image works better for you or not. Can I somehow dive directly into the source code from here? No, I can't. So I leave this open to you to check out the difference between the ion image. Of course, now the styling is different because you would have to apply a different selector for the CSS rule. But here we go with a Pinterest layout on small screens, on big screens, and as a desktop version as well with a nice effect. So I hope you enjoyed this um, a bit different tutorial with a more bigger focus on the CSS and styling aspect. If you want to see more about this and styling applications, just let me know below the video. Of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and finally check out the Ionic Academy, my place to show you even more stuff about Ionic and why it's great. I'd love to see you inside. I'd love to meet you in the next video. Have a great day and take care.